Hello, what is up guys? Eman from Peso Smart Page here. Welcome sa panibagong episode. Shout out to all the podcast listeners as well. I appreciate you all. Today, let's talk about some of the Philippine stocks that is on my watch list. Today, nito tayo sa trading view. Punta muna tayo sa daily time frame. So as we can see here, yung FMETF currently for 2022. Nasa downtrend lang siya. And nag-bottom out na siya. Nag-set ng local bottom at around 93.50. So, 2 days niyang nakuha yun. And that was the lowest sa daily RSI as well. If you take a look at the weekly time frame, hindi naman ganun kasama in comparison sa RSI nung 2020. Kasi dun talaga nag-dip ng sobra yung market. And yung PSEI nga, yung points, is umabot ng around 4,000 at that time. And nag-bottom out yung FMETF at that time at around 65.50. And currently, nasa 98 siya. So, it's still doing well. Then we have a Boitis Power. From 2020, maganda na rin yung recovery niya. And nagkaroon pa nga rin ng scare last year. Kasi tinanggal siya dun sa... Um, I can't remember kung ano, but parang ASEAN natin or like Asian something na parang list and tinanggal yung Aboytis Power doon. I'm not sure why, I really can't remember why, pero may nagsabi lang din sa akin na isang viewer at that time. That's why nag-bottom siya or nag-set siya ng local bottom last year ng around 20.50. And that was the time that I was buying this stock. Kasi it's a good stock, it's a good company. And gusto ko yung kanilang vision na they want to lessen their carbon emissions. And yun naman talaga yung goal ng buong Aboytis. Like, it, they share the same vision with AEV, which is yung kanilang parent na company. And nag-high na rin naman siya this year at around 37.45. And currently, nasa 31.20 siya. So yeah, I think it's gonna trade sideways until the end of the year. And meron pa rin kasing uncertainty sa mga mangyayari this year. Hindi pa rin nagwe-wave ng red flag yung United States. They're still insisting na they're not in a recession. But a lot of, a lot of key people or like, sabi natin mga investors na rin. They're already saying na, Nasa recession ng US and personally for me, I agree with them. But still, again, the government and the Fed, they don't want to admit it. Kasi may mga ilang metrics pa din na kailangan, for example, bumaba. Well, hindi naman bumaba. For example, unemployment. Yun yung isa nilang tinitingnan ni eh. Unemployment. Kasi pag uh, mawaba yung unemployment, like, hindi talaga consider as recession. Pero ang nangyayari nga, kapag ka nag-slow down na ng konti, like ganito, nag-tighten, na nag-quantitative uh, tightening na ulit. And nag-contract na yung GDP, yung GDP negatively. So, six straight months na, na walang growth yung GDP ng United States. So, usually kapag ka nangyayari yun, dun pala nag-follow yung high, higher unemployment rate. But hopefully hindi naman mangyari, but If the data su- as the data suggests from from previous recessions, ganon yun ang yari. Hindi agad to mataas yung unemployment rate, pero after two consecutive negative GDP growth. Anyway, I digress. So AP still doing good so far since nag bottom siya. Then ng 2020 at around 20.50. So inin pa yung bo- bottom niya last year. So yeah, it was, it was a really good buy last year. Nung sobrang takot yung market. Nung naspoke yung market. DMC, nung nag-open siya nung Monday. Was that yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Naspoke na konti yung market because of the issue with with one of the Konsunhi. Si Victor Konsunhi and si Maggie Wilson. So that surfaced again nung Monday. So medyo naspoke yung market. And bumaba na konti yung DMC, but it rebounded, it recovered. 
And ngayon nga, nasa 9.27 na ulit siya. And yesterday, yung low naman niya is 8.97 lang. So, it's not really that bad. Pero maganda na rin yung recovery na tong DMC. Nag-tress lang siya before. Yeah. Nag-bottom ng 2020 at around 3.19. Then, dito, 3.40. Then, last year... We went as low as 4.81. And people w were still not buying the stock at that price point. I say, force uncertainty and don't parent and price volatility. And people, people are, were claiming na it will still go down, but it just went up afterwards. So 9.27 na siya ngayon. And maganda rin kasi itong DMC since consistent sila nagbibigay ng dividends. So this can be a part of of your dividend portfolio as well. And punta na agad natin SEC kasi SEC or Semerara Mining Power Incorporation is part of DMC or DMCI Holdings. And I think na spoke din ng konti yung yung market sa SEC because of that Konsunhi thing. But I guess yung mga tao is nagte-take profits na rin. Since this was the highest in like a couple of years na. 41. And it's close to the all-time high na 50. Noong 2017 to So after 5 years. And then ulit siya sa price level. Almost sa price level na yun. So people are, in my opinion, taking profits na rin. And if you take a look at a longer time frame, kita nyo na nasa taas siya. And we know that uh, this stock is currently overheated. If for taking a look at a technical standpoint and a longer time frame and after claiming this this high RSI nga, like eventually mga bagsak siya hindi naman ganun ka haba or kalaki yung kumbaga sample size or history ng ng Semerara since yung data dito is hanggang 2005-2006 lang. But again, lahat, lahat nung high RSI, kapag ka nag-exceed siya ng 70 sa monthly, it eventually drops. And of course, the prices drops as well. And if we take a look here, kasi yun, ganun talaga yung mga market correction. So, tingnan natin yung highest point ng RSI dito. Then the lowest point after ulit siya mag... So around 53, 50-ish percent yung, binaba, yung binagsak. Then kung dito na tayo titingin, highest point RSI, sabi natin dito. Then the lowest point before umakyat ulit. You can say here. Well, dito umakyat siya. So, 11. Okay. So dito hindi na siya valid. Hindi na siya valid in this, in this particular run. Kasi umakit lang siya. Bumagsak dito ng konti, nag-low ng around 13.40. But eventually, umakit lang siya ng umakit until ma-reach yung all-time high. But after that all-time high, doon na ulit siya bumagsak. But we can compare it here. Like for example, dito. Mataas pa rin yung RSI dito monthly. And then it went down here. Kung pumunta natin yung bottom, around 40-ish percent. Then this was the biggest drop. From here up until the bottom in 2020. Or you can, you can see if March 2020. So 80%. I'm not saying na mangyayari ulit to. Kasi yung, kumbaga, noong 2019, I think hindi to mangyayari kung hindi nagkaroon ng pandemic. So, siguro, yes, babagsak siya ng konti pa at this price level. But siguro may sideways lang siya. And eventually, magkakaroon ulit na recovery. So, ganun yung nakikita ko. If hindi nangyari yung pandemic. But of course, that is a an unexpected event and black swan event. So, it happened. So, mas malaki kumbaga yung naging recovery ng stock na to. And the same thing goes for other assets naman. Since lahat hindi in-expect yung, you know, 
yung global lockdowns and total lockdowns. So, yung economic activity is sobrang baba talaga nung nangyari yun. And of course, yung uncertainty is at its highest at that time. That's why a lot of market participants were spooked. So, they sold and they they ran sa kumbaga parang safe haven ng cash. Okay, moving on to Globe. Globe is currently bearish right now. From, I'm not sure if that's the all-time high. Yeah, that was the all-time high. So, mabay siya sa, sa run ng S&P 500 and like other tech stocks. And ng cryptocurrencies ng November. So, nag-all-time high siya. Around 3,670. And right now, it's currently down by around 43%. So, in my opinion lang, it's a good time to DCA globe. So, yung maganda pa rin yung fundamentals ng globe. And medyo attractive na rin yung price niya. That's why, if you can recall, I think two weeks ago ba or last week, I can't re- really remember. Bumili ako ng mga ng globe stocks at around 2,000 2,020 pesos per share my price target was below 2,000 but hindi ma-fill yung order ko palagi so medyo pangit yung timing ko <laughs> but that's okay kasi 2050 na ulit siya ngayon so kuminta na ako ng ilang percent din dun sa dun sa buy na yun and I'm planning to hold din naman globe stocks for a long time then GME7 nag-hit na ulit siya yesterday ng 11 so that's good but hindi na ganun kalaki din yung kumbaga, parang interest ng mga traders sa JME7 in comparison nung 2021. Doon talaga nag-boom yung price ng JME7. So we're not entirely sure if makuha pa ulit yung mga prices na to in, in the future. But I think it will. Kailangan ng konting patience. And profitable naman yung JME7. Oh, nagkaroon na sila ng earnings dito. Hindi, August 16 pa pala. So wala pa. Kala ko nag-release na sila ng earnings. So, we have to read up on that and we have to review that kung kumasabay yung cash flow nila for the second quarter of 2022. Then, LTG. I think LTG is one of the most undervalued stocks currently sa PSE. And PSEI. Remember din siya ng PSEI. So, nag-plummet ng sobra yung kan- kanyang prices. Ever since nung nag- Nag-record sila ng isang quarter na ng losses last year. Kasi one quarter, I think second or third quarter ng 2021, net loss yung LTG. So that was that was really a bad quarter for them. But they recovered. And net income pa rin naman sila for the whole year of 2021. And I think na-match nila or nag-increase pa ng konti sa numbers sila ng 2020. So yeah, I think solid buy yung LT Group. And dividend paying stock nito to. And again, one of the biggest companies here in the Philippines. Market cap wise. Although, mumaba na ng konti yung market cap nila kasi nga, mumaba din yung stock prices. So, from the highs last year. Around 15.50. Down na siya ng around 40, 44%. So yeah, personally for me, I'm DC, I'm peso cost averaging sa LTG. Same thing with Globe. Kasi sila yung mga malalaki yung upside. And medyo hindi na ganun ka risky investment since profitable companies to, member ng PSEI, and then dividend paying stocks. So I think it's a win-win situation. And ganun nga yung mga magandang opportunities to, to buy your stocks. Like for example, nung 2020 nga. That's the best time to buy stocks and assets, risk on assets. So, lot ng tao, takot. So, they're selling even though they're at a loss at that time. Say, kumaga cut loss nga daw. And again, they, they're running for this a safe haven, which is again cash. But yeah, if you don't really need the cash, then why would you sell? So, it's much better to buy. And may na basa na report actually. I just want to share it with you guys. Like yung Gulf, what do you call this? Gulf, basta sa, I think sa Middle, yeah, Middle East yun. And yung mga investors na yun is mga 
parang mga sovereign sovereign countries and then they have their own funds. Tapos nag-invest sila kapag nagkaroon ng mga crisis. Like for example, mula nilang investments nung nag-crash yung market because of the housing bubble and forced me kasama din mga leverage and then yung mga yung mga parang lending and like mortgages is hindi nare-review ng tama ng mga bangko. So, kumbaga, binail out nila ng mga Gulf investors na yun, mga Middle Eastern investors na yun. Yung mga banks sa United States. Sa United States. Like, for example, Barclays and Wells Fargo and kung ano naman. And after just a year, from 2008 to 2009, like, they almost doubled their investments. And then, of course, they sold those investments. And the same thing happened noong 2020. So, baga meron silang budget or nag sila ng capital around, I think, mga 9 billion US dollars noong 2019. And then, nung nag-hit yung pandemic noong 2020, na-double, more than na-double, I think, nasa 20 billion to 21 billion dollars yung in-invest nila. Kasi nga, for some people, it's catching falling knives. But if if your market is nagre-react irrationally, and the fundamentals is still there, is still intact, and they're still set to make some money in the future. I mean, the business is still intact. Hindi sila bankrupt. Hindi sila nag reorganize, like for example, internally or nag or or reorganize by yung kanilang financial structure. That's that's still a good business. They're just having a bad year. And especially dun sa mga industries or sa mga businesses or companies na directly affected nung, what do you call this, nung pandemic. For example, airlines, di ba? Sino nagtatravel nung, nung nagkaroon ng lockdowns? Wala. Halos wala, di ba? Mga essential, mga essential employees or essential workers lang. And ano pa ba ibang mga affected? Like for example, mga, mga commercial buildings. Since yung mga offices hindi nag operate so puro work from home lang. So, naapektuhan din yun. And then, mga hospitality. Hospitality like hotels. And then, for example, mga restaurants. So, directly affected din sila. So, they had a very bad year noong 2020. But, ang ganda ng recovery nila noong 2021, noong nag-ease in na yung mga restrictions and yung mga lockdowns is nawawala na. So, again... It's better to buy when people are afraid. Again, yung sinasabi lang din ni Warren Buffett. Be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. So, you can always apply that. And again, sometimes saman parang kumaga may ethical conundrum. Is that the right term? Parang ganun. May parang ethical dilemma din na mangyayari if if ganun yung ginagawa mo, di ba? Parang you're, you're being opportunistic na may mga, may mga tao nagsasuffer and then you're trying to profit from it. But that's not really the case. Yung bottom line dito is you're investing. You're taking charge of your, your personal finance. And you're trying to invest and you're trying to buy good businesses at a bargain. So that's, that's pretty much it. Alright, moving on. We have, natapos natin yung, yung SEC. We have SPC. So ito, ang problema naman ng SPC, I was really a big fan of this stock ever since nag-start ako mag-dividend investing. So again, December 2018 ako nag-start mag-invest and I think early 2019 ako nag-buy in dito sa SPC Power. And yeah, around 6 to 7-ish pesos per share yung average price ko or cost basis ko for SPC Power back then. And I was I was a big fan of this company kasi nga dividend paying stock sila. And then on 2020 nag nag bumili ulit ako. Actually yeah, I think I think so baba pa sa. I think nakabili din ako nung hmm. Kasi nung nag dip nung 2020, I think eh, Nasa green pa rin yung portfolio ko. I'm, I'm not sure. Kaya, or, or like, parang break even lang din ako nung nag-crash nung 2020. Then, umakyat. Tapos, maganda yung run niya nung 2021. 
Tapos nag-high nga, all-time high ng around 15.90 na tong Feb 2022. Although their stocks plummeted kasi hindi maganda yung kanilang financials. Buti at yung makita yung financials dito. Yeah, hindi ganun kaganda yung financials nila. Nung 2022. Na itong 2022. So, as you can see here, the same financials. Net revenue. 2021 profitable pa rin sila, but I believe may loss na ba sila? Uh, cash flow. Income statement. Yeah, nung Nung f- hindi, quarter 4 pala. Quarter 4 ng 2021. Ano silang 79.89 million na net losses. So that's, that's not, that's not good. So naspook din, you know, net income. Then hindi ganun kalaki yung kanilang income for the first quarter of 2022. So that really affected their share prices and because dividend paying stock nga sila it will depend sa kanilang profits yung mga dividends na ibibigay nila or ibabayad nila sa kanilang mga stockholders although it's still at 10.60 and comparison nung bottom nung 2020 almost double pa rin no? kung 650 or 7 ka bumili it's you're still up kahit na nag copy dito Nagbenta sila ng around 8.36. Wow. And kita naman din natin yung technicals. Hindi ka nakababa yung monthly RSI, but the weekly RSI was destroyed from May, end of May. For almost a month. Kaka-recover pa lang din niya. But yeah, anyway. Let's go to PLDT. Last two stocks tayo. PLDT and GSMI. So PLDT currently holding 1746, 1750 level. All-time high, I believe is this one. So almost kapresyo siya nung all-time high din ng, ng globe. So around 3486. In my opinion, okay pa din bilhin sa ganitong price level yung 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 PLDT. Kasi again, it's a stable company. It's a stable stock. And dividend paying to. And one again, one of the biggest companies here in the Philippines. And two of the biggest players sa Telco. So down lang siya ng 11, 11% from the highs nitong taon. But if compute mo naman yung yield, the dividend yield is still good and in my opinion, it's still worth it. Kung magdi-DCA ka sa PLDT. But Mas malaki pa rin yung opportunity and yung upside with the globe if you compare mo sila head to head. Then last si GSMI, na hold niya yung 100, na hold niya yung 100 na support. And all time high niya was 126. That was the highest. Yeah, that was the highest. So na nakabili ako nung stock na to before but binenta ko rin nung 2021. So I wasn't able to enjoy this this run here na around above 100 pesos per share. I mean, that's good. That's that's okay with me. Kasi, hindi mo ako nagbebenta ng stock if wala akong paglalagyan na I think mas magandang opportunity. And yung alternative na stock naman na binili ko after selling GSM ay dead well din naman. So, I think almost pareho lang. Although, siguro mas, ma- mas malaki din yung percentage gains ko if nag-stick lang ako sa GSM ay. But yeah, ganun talaga may mga opportunity cost yung mga decisions natin. I think I bought, yeah, at around 30-ish pesos per share. If I can recall correctly. Kasi nagbibili din ng dividends in GSMI. Although hindi ganun kataas, they're still paying dividends. And dun nga sa, sa price naman na around 30 to 40 pesos na level before ng 2020. Maganda yung price level na or yung entry na yun kasi... Kumaga naglalaro sa 4 to 5% na yung ibabayad sa yun na dividends ng GSMI. In comparison ngayon, ang mataas na yung price nila. 
Ayan, sa taas pa sila sa San Miguel, I believe. Yeah, almost ka-level na nila yung San Miguel Corporation. Sa taas pa sila ng konti. 102 na yung GSMI. So yeah, that's crazy. Before yung, yung San Miguel talaga is ganun na. Nasa 90, nasa, nasa 100. Then yung GSMI nag, just setting at 30, 40, 50 pesos. Then ngayon 102 na rin. So yeah, good run. Very good run for, for this stock. Alright, lastly, I want to share this sheet with you guys. Hindi pa siya kompleto but ito yung watch list ko. Baga parang modified na watch list. Kasi pwede nyo rin naman itong gawin sa for example, call financial, pwede sa BPA trade, or kung ano-ano pa, pwede dito rin sa trading view. But I think mas okay din na nasa spreadsheet. Especially if you're gonna track multiple assets across different, for example, exchanges, across different industries. For example, may mga stocks ka, may mga bonds ka, may mga cryptocurrencies ka, may real estate ka. So, it's much better for you to track it on a spreadsheet. And currently, nagpa-practice nga din ako dun sa Excel online para matuto ng mga, ng mga basics din, ng mga formulas na magiging useful for keeping track with, with the stock market. And maganda ka sa'yo dito sa Excel Siguro gawa lang tayo ng standalone na episode and I'll give you a tutorial kung paano gawin to and how you can track or create a watch list for yourself. So, madali naman siya gawin and it will take you a couple of minutes. Siguro 30 minutes max to create this. And siguro gawin ko lang din is share ito sa inyo para makuha nyo rin yung kumbang, mga formulas and yung format. But yeah, we'll do a tutorial and probably in the next episode, let's see kung ano yung mga nasa pipeline ng, ng content natin. But yeah, yung nakalagay dito, ano lang naman, basic lang, ticker, stock, and then last price. Then na-update to, like every 15 minutes. Previous close, day high, day low, change. Then percentage change, 52-week high, 52-week low. Lahat ito, naka-formula lang din. Itong mga to. But yung upside and yung downside, ako na yung gumawa niyan. So, ibig sabihin lang nito, upside from the last traded price to the 52-week high. Then yung downside naman is the last traded price coming to the 52-week low. Then ito, kinolor code lang natin. Kung alin ba may pinamangandang upside and may, kumaga may malayong downside. So, kita nyo dito. For example, Semerara. Since kaka all time high lang niya or ni naman kaka 52 week high lang niya. Yung upside niya is 7.12% lang. Then yung downside niya, ibig sabihin mas malaki yung chance niya. Hindi naman sa mas malaki. Pero kapag ka nag-plummet siya back to its 52 week low, malaki yung maging potential losses. So yan, parang ano lang, parang indicator for your risk management. Then isang example is Globe Telecom. So kaka 52 week low lang niya. Last week, 1948. Last week or two weeks ago. So, yung downside niya is mababa. 4.42% lang yung kaya niya ibagsak pagka nag 52-week low ulit siya. And yung upside naman is mataas, 80.08%. Siya may pinakamataas na upside dito sa mga stocks na nasa watch list ko. Kasi yung potential niya from 2038 to 3670 is 80.08%. So, ganoon lang siya Yun guys, end na natin yung episode here. Sana may natutunan kayo. And if mabot kayo at the end of this video, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Don't forget to leave this video a thumbs up. Subscribe na kayo if bago kayo sa channel para wala kayo mamiss out sa mga uploads ko every single day. Thanks again for watching and listening everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you on the next episode. Always remember, be passive smart.